people welcome back to the Blakers Spirit channel sorry it's been a while today we're going to be looking at Karate Combat 44 once again this is my official predictions video I'm the reason it's so I wanted to do it earlier but the reason it's so damn late is because they literally announced like all the whole like karate card like literally like yesterday I think it was as of now I'm recording this on the 20th so on the Tuesday and I think it was yesterday or maybe Sunday evening that they announced the rest, so I was like kind of waiting for them, like, come on, karate combat. I can't just do a prediction video and just a four fight. Surely there's going to be more actual karate, karate fights and four fights. But thankfully there are. I think there's like eight or something like that. Um, I've got a list of them down here, but I'm just going to go through each of them and tell you guys who I think is going to win each fight and why. But before I start, guys, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, I've actually got like a schedule and rota now, like a proper one, so. Not like, I'm not like an amateur and I'm literally just doing videos whenever I come up with a video. I've got like a rotten schedule, got some ex exciting video ideas coming up, interviews, etc. So make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and my socials down in the description down below. Let's get straight into it. Now, first fight, guys. I could not say this guy's last name. Uh, Tarkiej. Anyone from Poland, please let me know in the, in the comments how you pronounce it. Um, I don't want to butcher it, but he's going to be fighting Shannon Hudson. Yes, Shannon the Cannon Hudson, the guy who I fully believe, and I thought this was the worst decision on, on the night in Las, I think it was Las Vegas, on the Las Vegas card in December. This was the worst decision when he lost to Chinzo Machida, the brother of UFC legend Lyoto. I thought he won that fight, and he was really unfairly uh, not given the nod in that. But he's coming in against Tark Makied, Tarkiej, uh, who's a Polish guy. Uh, I think he's, he does Kukushin. He's 0-3, so he's lost all three fights. Uh, and, you know, fair play to Hans Shan Hudson. For at 44, yes, 44 years old, he's getting in the pit for the second time. I thought that Chinzo thing was just a one-off, but it seems like he's still doing it. And I know he's got, like, he owns a fitness uh, partner of Karate Combat, but damn, that, that guy's a legend. Uh, Tokiaj, he's only he owned three, but he's lost to Bruno, Bruno Souza, who's obviously ranked like top five, top ten guy, Madeira and Ramirez. All those guys, I think, are around the top 15. So, uh, and obviously, Tokiaj is 29. So, I mean, I didn't, I'm a bit worried about how this one could go for Hudson just because Tokiaj is so much younger than him and he's probably been a bit more active in recent years. So, I'm gonna go for Tokiaj, but it'd be amazing. Shannon Hudson could do it. It'd be like George, it'd be like the George Foreman of Karate Combat. Next one we have Reyes versus uh, Sanchez, Marco Sanchez. Now Rodrigo Reyes, he's a Mexican, so he, he's gonna have the home crowd with him. He's a three and three MMA fighter, but I think the real story of this one is his opponent, Marco Sanchez. What well, you know, there's a big, big biography on him on Karate Combat, and he hasn't even fought for them yet. He's like a Guatemalan. Uh, grew up in like uh, poor housing, a public housing, I think it, I think it's called in California, with his like four older sisters, was a big family. Fighting was a way of him to get out of that poverty, and uh, you know I think there's a reason why Karate Combat have written such a big thing about him on their website. I think he's someone who they're looking uh, to build a star potentially for them to build a bit like Shazay Brind. He's got a bit of like a tough guy aura, you know. He's got the tattoos and all of that, and he's a big guy. He's middleweight, so. Yeah, that I'm expecting Marcus Sanchez to win that for me. Next one, Escarega versus Yanchuk. Now, this could be, I think, this could be one of the fights of the night, not in just terms of an all out brawl, but just in terms of karate or striking technique. Uh, Escarega, he's actually on a five fight MMA winning streak. Yes, it's not karate, I know it's MMA, but similar kind of thing. Two of those uh, five fight wins have been KOs. So he's and his record 12 3 and 1. He's coming against Yanchuk, who is a legit uh, karate guy. Uh, I think it's Kudo he does. Um, I think I think it's Kudo, I think that's the karate style he has. But uh, yeah, 2 and 1 in karate combat, only lost to Russia, who's obviously the champion in the lightweight division, beating Din Dinusha Gustavo and Vitaly Kurtan. Both of those guys are, are legit. Uh, this one's gonna be really interesting for, for me, anyway, just as a fight fan in general, not just a karate like. A really good MMA fight on a hot streak against a really good proven karate guy uh, in the pit. That'll be a very interesting one. 
If I had to pick, hmm, you know what? I'm going to go with Escarega. It might be a bit of an upset because it's his first time and he's going in there against a guy who's had three in the pit. But but we've seen this. We've seen like MMA, we've seen people like Sam Alvey just come in straight from MMA and crush it. So uh, I'm going to give this one to Escarega on points. Now, next one. Levi Marroquin versus, uh, his nickname's Dai Uel, but I think it's Andre Uel. Uel, sorry, not Uel. Marroquin, also on the three-fight MMA win streak. He's on, he's in the win column in MMA, not karate, I know. And then Andre Uel, obviously he's a former UFC fighter. He's fought the likes of Renan Barrow, Nathaniel Wood, Cheeto Vera, who's literally fighting Sean O'Malley uh, next month for the Bantamweight belt in the UFC. But more recently, he's been in boxing and also bare knuckle boxing. So this guy is a tough, tough motherfucker. Anyone that does bare knuckle boxing is mad. I don't care what anyone says. You're crazy for doing that shit. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know what? He's lost his last two fights. I th I think this one could be that kind of brawl, all that war kind of fight. Um, but just given Uel, just given this, this is a strictly striking thing. I think Marikin's gonna win it, and also you will. He's had a lot, a few losses recently. So I'm going to go for Marikin and I'm going to go finish in the round three. Now, going in, going into the latter stage of the event, we have Escudero versus Rafael Alves. This is potentially going to be my favorite fight of the night. Both UF, both UF's former UFC fighters. Escudero, you can say, is a UFC veteran. Uh, he's beaten the likes of Drew Dober and Rodrigo de Lima. Both of those guys have been ranked in the UFC lightweight division, I think. And uh, obviously Alves, the, also another ex-UFC fighter. Uh, he won the 2020 Contender Series against Alejandro Flores, who's fighting in a co-main event. How funny is that? That's amazing. Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, this one's going to be, I think this will be that all like brawl, brawl fight. Karate Combat, I've noticed that they're always trying to put one of these on, and I think this is going to be the one. Yeah, obviously Alves, you know, you, you may also know, know him for that little dance move. How does Drew Dober take that shot? I think that might have been his first or second fight after he won the Contender Series. But uh, hopefully he can pull off those moves and, and get a win as well. Because uh, I think he's a bit of a character. I'm going to go, I am actually going to go for Alves just because I think Escudero has a lot of miles on the clock. I was looking at his record. He's had a lot of fights. Uh, he's had, yeah, I think he's, I think he's had 49 fights uh, in total, something like that. He's had around 50 fights. Um, and, you know, we've seen like people like Donald Cerrone and Togi, Tony Ferguson, when they get that amount of mileage, because it's not just the fights themselves, it's the camps and it's the training in between. Like it does take a toll on your body as you get older. Um, and he's no spring chicken, so I'm going to go for Alves just because he's just had a few less fights. He's pretty, he might have a bit more energy. Next one, Shazé Brind versus Cabos. Now, I know I, could, I couldn't really find that much about this Cabos guy. He's Peruvian, uh, also another former MMA fighter. I think he had like a 9-2 record, so not, not the best in the world. But obviously, they're putting Shazé Brind, the third fight, the one just before the co-main event. And a bit like uh, Marco Sanchez, I that I mean, the, Rin's already a star in karate combat. He's one of the biggest stars for me. Uh, he is someone they are actively, actively trying to build. They're trying to keep him active. Obviously, had that amazing, amazing knockout in Las Vegas. Uh, he, his stuff gets shown all over in Pakistan. Well, I don't know if he, I remember he saw a tweet and he was having it saying, "Oh, my, I hope my fights get shown in pa Pakistan," but. They're trying to grow in that uh, that market, that Asian market, and uh, but yeah, he's a top pro prospect. He's massive for that for that card, um, and I'm 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 massive for that card, massive for that weight class, for the lightweight weight class, and I, I'm expecting him to win again, probably pretty convincingly. If he if he can get another knockout, kind of real, uh, you know, that like a highlight or sort of something like that, where he just complete or he just completely takes this guy apart then you've got to put him as a main event and he's got to challenge uh, either Luis Rocha or maybe give him that Edgar Scrivers fight or just someone higher up the rankings. Like, he's got to have uh, someone in those top five or give or just 
give them to Rocha straight away. I don't know. I don't know whether they're gonna. They're probably not gonna do that. But now the next one: Flores, Alejandro Flores versus Bruno Assis. Now I have to apologise because in the last video I was talking about uh, Bruno Assis because this was one of the ones that they announced. I I I got confused with him, Bruno Souza, and I was like, oh, he's you know he's got balls because he's the guy who went in. It's Raymond Daniels and it's like two days notice. Bruno, uh, I apologise, Bruno Assis. But uh, yeah, that was Bruno Souza. I was talking about not Bruno Assis. Bruno Assis, he's three and two karate combat. He's had a he's had a he had a great fight with Tim Ha last time in November. I think it was I think it was November. Uh, that was a barnstormer of a fight. Was he Tim Ha's tough as nails? But Assis managed to get three of them. And then Flores, like I said, he lost in the contender series in the UFC to Rafael Alves. Uh, he reached the quarters of the 2022 PFL Sweden though, so he's no mug. He's going to have that Mexican home crowd behind him. Uh, but I'm going to... Ah, this is a tough one. I'm going to go for Bruno Assis, you know. I'm going to go for Bruno Assis. I know he's already fought Russia, but I reckon he'll have another crack at him soon. If he wins this, then he might even have a title shot. And now that Russia and Scrivers have finished the trilogy, you can't really do that a fourth time. So maybe if he wins this fight, then he can get and fight Edgar Scrivers for that number one contender spot. And finally... The main event of the evening. Goito Perez versus Owen Chalmier. Now, the last one, the last video I did when I was talking about this was a bit rushed because it just got announced. And I just wanted to, I hadn't done a video in a while, so I just wanted to just initially break down. But now I've done a bit of research on Goyito Perez. And oh my god, Owen Chalmier, he has some serious he has some serious balls at kick because Goyito Perez is legit. This isn't just like an old scrubbed up MMA fighter. He's proper. He's legit. I watched one of his fight. I watched one of his most recent fights. I think it was like last year um, in in Combates, which is like the Latin American or one of the like the American uh, lesser uh, minor MMA organizations. It's on the zone. He last fought in March in Bellator, and I do think he lost that fight. But he's a very big for bantamweight. He's rangy. He's got quite long arms as well. He's got kind of a, a unique build for that weight class. Obviously, Chelmia, he did struggle against Munoz Abek in, uh, I think it was September, October, in that fight in, on that Dominican Republic card when he lost, got knocked out with that body shot. He did struggle with Tebuev. He obviously likes to come forward. He's an aggressive fire. I just hope he doesn't, anything like that doesn't happen to him again. He didn't get peppered like that again. So I don't think that, that, that won't, obviously, that won't do him good. That'll hurt his confidence for sure. But he is 5 and 1 in Korea combat. He's a former champion. He's one of these guys that's been around the company the longest. Uh, you know, looking to get back to winning ways after that, that devastating Tebu Web loss. If he beats this guy, he's getting that title shot again. He's having a crack at it once again. I'm telling you right now, because Guido Perez is no joke, even though he's never been in the pit before. So yeah, hope you like the video. Make sure, give me your predictions in the comments down below. Who do you think is going to win? Any of those, give me any of those fights, the main event, co-main, whatever. Who do you think is going to win the Karate Combat? And who do you think is going to be the star of this show? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, and also my socials, my Twitter and Instagram. In the, also in the description down below. And I'll see you in the next one.